Okay. So uh, I'm glad you joined. Um, I'm not going to do shout outs today. Uh, we'll except for one very special one that was shouted out already on the team page. But a certain somebody on this call <laughs> hit certified. <laughs> Yay! Yay! Yeah. I'm so very proud. I'm so excited. I know that was a, a big thing that you tried to get to for a long time. And I'm really proud of you and I'm excited for you. So um, for all of us, and I'm going to do a little quick talk on this because I know there are a bunch of people who said, I want to earn this trip. I want to go on that cruise. I want to earn the trip. And this is my, I've been around a long time and I know how these things go. We get all hyped up and excited because we want that trip. We look at it. We're like, we're going to do it. And we are like, we're all going to help each other. And then we even made a plan. A lot of us this year. And we knew the plan looked hard. I knew the plan was like, well, I've never done this plan before. I've never accomplished this since you got a little doubt. And you have that whole cycle, but I still want to do it this year. And that's great. Well, we are now into it a couple months and a lot of our numbers are not supporting that effort as well as we would like. Um, and so it is important to not totally just say, well, I can't do it. I mean, I, a lot of us are in that place. I think where you go, we'll see, here it is again. I knew I couldn't do it and I'm not going to do it. And I just want to encourage you. We have four months left, four months. Anything can happen. People have earned the trip in one or two months. We have four months. There's no reason we can't do it. And so it really is going to take though going, okay, what is going to make us not do it? Well, continuing the way we've continued, the way we've already gone. He found you. <laughs> and so you've got to reassess that plan. And if that plan is daunting, then talk to somebody else, break it down. Um, the main thing is to get results you've never had, you got to do things you've never done. And we know that and we, we know it, but it's making yourself do it. Because it's a lot easier just to be like, oh, wow, that's just so hard. I could never do it and just kind of give up. Um, there will be many, many, many people who do that. And I don't want us to be those people. And listen, I feel the same way. I'm just like you. Like, I have to get the people. I ha I, I, it's hard to get to my next promotion for those points. Like, I, there's a lot of things that need to happen. So I always think, I want to encourage you that I know, I know you can do it. I mean, there are people of every kind of uh, work background, economic background, um, people who have 10,000 things going on, people who are young, people who are older. We've got grandparents that earn these trips. We've got little young people who have barely gotten you know, out of high school that earn these trips and everybody in between. There is no reason that you and I can't earn it, except if we don't break it down and go for it and believe in ourselves. And those are the things I just wanted to encourage you because a lot of times I get to the last month and I'm like, oh, I really wanted this trip. And then I go, there's only a month left and it's January. Like that's a bad month. Nobody's going to do all this. I can't get anybody certified. I can't sell as much as I need to sell, but we're not in January yet. We are only in October. And so we have so much and it's prime time, right? Like it's prime season. So if if you haven't sold as much as you need to, which I imagine most of us could sell more, even I'm not having the record number of sales that I normally have, um, then we gotta go out and share it. We gotta talk, talk, talk. We gotta text, text, text. We've got to share something with excitement and urgency. And like, this is selling out, you've gotta have it. You gotta talk about your teenage room that's so disgusting, but you're so glad you have Cincy Fresh or you've got the warmer going or the diffuser. Like you've got to get people's attention. And right now I feel like people's attention is really divided and 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 tired and busy and so I feel like for me that's one of my biggest changes um I feel like people at readjusting from COVID and getting back into life are overwhelmed there we talked a little bit about this last few weeks but I just think it bears repeating I think that's why we're seeing in October and that it's bloody like 95 degrees outside come on we need some cold weather that would certainly help us and I wonder how much is also hurting us that people have lost their sense of smell like some people have never come back I don't know just a thought like Maybe, but I have some people who are like, yeah, it still really has never come back. That's crazy. Stupid COVID. Anyway, um, so I have an open house that I'm just throwing together tomorrow because I haven't done one. I did one sometime in the summer. It wasn't real well attended. Um, I usually had a ton of people come to my open houses, especially in October, November, December. Uh, they were quite the event. I have had a few people asking like, hey, are you having one soon? So I'm hoping because it's later in October, people will want to come. 
tomorrow most people have off that could be a good thing for me or a bad thing but it, when I looked at our calendar literally that's about all I have that's about the only day I could try so I'm like it's worth a try no matter what um so I thought we would talk a little bit about parties uh today um I was hoping we'd have a couple more people so we could divide up and work a little bit but we'll just do a little brainstorming together um open house is one type of party Michelle you've done some open houses right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. normally at your own house you just opened up and yeah. down or yeah with someone else or yeah um what do you like about open houses and what do you not like well I mean I like a, the opportunity to get rid of a lot of stuff that I have in stock yeah. but yeah. I have to say it just they haven't been that successful for me you know as far as getting people to come it'll either not that people don't want to but it'll be on a, on a day that they had something else or you know just trying to get the interest there yeah. so yeah. yeah I find the same thing I would say the same thing because for me when you have an open house and you can't say hey I come by all my stuff I have at my house you can't advertise right. it publicly of course but people kind of know if they're coming to your house, they're probably not just smelling scent testers and ordering. Although if you are someone who's starting out and doesn't have a lot of stuff, you can absolutely have an open house where you're sharing your catalog and you're showing some of your items off that aren't for sale right then, but you can place orders. So either way, if you have stock or don't have stock, you can do an open house. Mm -hmm. I usually plan it for two days. I will normally do it like a Sunday afternoon or a Sunday evening and a Monday afternoon. Um, or like a Tuesday and a Saturday. Um, it, it, that way I can keep it set up. And then people who are busy on a certain time, they are like, oh, I'm so glad you did this another night. I can do it again. Um, but that is tricky. And it is a busy season because I was thinking tomorrow, um, we normally would have gone to a pumpkin patch tomorrow, but Caden has um, a five hour wind ensemble rehearsal on his day off. Oh and then this, yeah. and we, we actually have Monday and Tuesday off because it's uh, teacher work days, but Tuesday they have marching UIL. And so even though they've got both days off, they've got stuff all day. So we couldn't really do it as a family. And I think if that's our family, a lot of other kids that are doing things like that or you know, whatever. So it may not be successful. Plus I, I just feel like I'm getting worse at advertising things and getting the the pre stuff done because I'm so busy all the time it's hard to get the proper excitement going but I am going to te uh, text a ton of people tonight and just say hey tomorrow here's my little graphic tomorrow is my open house I sent an email this morning I put it on Facebook a couple of times but sending it directly to people uh, I think is real big so just like hey I hope you can swing by and then a lot of times what happens is even if they can't make it they will say but I need a six pack or I need some stuff or you know and I'll say hey you can come by anytime or I can place an order for you um, with an open house something if somebody's watching the, the replay if you've never done one I just say this is like talking to your past self like when you're an adult and you want to go back and tell your kid you tell your younger self something like don't do this or whatever as my younger Cincy consultant I am way too elaborate and I'm also saying it so I can preach to myself right now since I'm going to set up tonight and tomorrow. <laughs> Don't overdo it. Um, yeah. I used to be real fancy. And I think part of it is just crossing over 40 and I'm tired all the time. I've gotten less fancy. But I can't do it as great as I used to do it. And I'd spend so much time and then I'd just be like worn out. Um, and that's true for home parties too. Like if you go into someone's home that's hosting, uh, they always say keep it simple because if you make it too elaborate, you want it to be nice enough that it makes an impression and that they get a good sampling and they're like, oh, this is awesome. But if you make it so elaborate that it looks hard, no one's ever going to want to do it, which is what I did for years. I was great at sales, but I made it look so hard. Nobody ever wanted to sign up to do it. They just were like, you're good at it. I'll buy it from you, which really you know, shot me in the foot. So with my open house, I have my inventory on spinner bars. I just set my spinners out and then I'm going to pull out a few warmers that I have, like a few that kind of go together in some groupings and set them out. Um, other than that, I'm going to let them kind of shop my office. I'm not going to, I'm not going to go overboard because then if nobody shows up, that's depressing. And mm -hmm. I have all that to put up. If someone does show up, there's no reason I can't say, well, let's go. I can pull this out. I have this and this. I can pull them out as needed. So just keeping it professional, but not overwhelming is a big tip of mine. 
go live, go live and go, Hey, I'm setting up my open house. I can't wait to see you, you know, do it a few times because a lot of times people have seen the graphic then they got busy and forgot. They didn't put it in their phone, but then they see your live and they're like, Oh, she's going to do it till five. I could swing by. So I always recommend doing that. Um, having somebody else go live that comes to your open house, say, Hey, you know, you need some smells. I'm here. Do you need anything? Use your resources. Um, okay. So open house is one type of a party. I do think they're great. It's really good when you're consistent, like for years and years, I would always, like I said, do um, fall and winter open houses and people got to expect it and they were looking forward to them. So I've, with COVID, that's gotten a little bit out of whack. We weren't doing it. And so I think it's just going to be a little bit getting consistent again. Um, I do normally do some kind of a door prize if I haven't thought about what I'm doing yet. Um, also, like sometimes you can give incentives for people to come early or be the first, you know, first five people get a little something special. That something special could be anything. Like it could be some of your old testers wrapped up cute and you just give them a little thing of testers. It could be scent circles you have on hand. It could be some candy bars you bought at the dollar store. I mean, it could be anything. Just something to say, hey, I'm glad you came. Um, I could be a few cotton cleanups, you know, uh, those are great little gifts. I love, especially with how hard they were to get for so long. So use what you have um, and don't break the bank, but that would be something you could, in your text messages, your Facebook messages, you could just say, hey, the first five people that come get a little goodie bag or a little something special for me just to help get people there. Any other tips or thoughts about open houses before I move to different types of parties? I think so. I think that was pretty good. Okay. Um, let me grab this. I'll be right back. Uh, on the go parties. <clears throat> on the go parties. Now I've done a bunch of different versions of on the go parties and I'm sure you have a version, Michelle, um, of something you use. I have done it 10 million ways, but this is my current on the go party. And I, um, I'm sticking with this right now because I really like the organization of it. And I just printed these out, put a few of my favorites. Um, I bought these at Hobby Lobby. They were like in a craft apartment and it keeps them, I get a better, I get them returned better than when they're just all mixed in. And then people can go, oh uh, no, I do not like citrus or floral and they can just skip it. So I think it makes for good experience when people borrow it. What I've done, a couple different things. Um, I bought some colorful envelopes this time. And I think I, because of COVID, I didn't want to lick all over things. So I just used some uh, washi tape back here. So I think I can lift it up, uh, maybe not. I'm just gonna show you what I put in them. So when I do my bag party like this, um, I normally prepare it for about 10 guests. That's 10 to 12. That's being pretty optimistic because a lot of times it comes back and they've hardly given anything out. But what I'm trying now is doing it in an envelope instead of just loose so that it looks ready to give somebody. Um, here's an example of what I put in this time. I just had bought these little stickers, like I don't even know where, but I just like, hey, it's fun. They get something cute in there. Um, I did felt samples of the scent of the month after I ran out of something. And then I found these little things somebody shared. So I just stapled them on. So I put the sample of the month in there. It's nice and flat, which is good. I'm doing product sheets instead of full catalogs for cost eff effectiveness. And also I love that people can write on them, circle them, use them that way. It has everything. I printed this out and I will try to link this. I found this in another group, but somebody had done the love it, like it, you know, want it page. Um, and I just, I've never really included that, but I decided to do that this time. So I folded those in trifold as well. I love that these fit in the envelope. So I did both of these since they're both current and then a join uh, brochure. So that's what I've put in each little packet for each person. That's a pretty good little goodie bag. And then for some like that I'm mailing, I've done the same thing, except I put a scent circle as well. Those would be my customers that have bought from me um, either online or something like that. I've got a bunch of mail outs. I worked really, I was really busy Friday and Saturday or Friday, Thursday and Friday. I worked on tons and tons of mail outs. Um, okay, so I put them in these little bright envelopes just because they're fun. I think I bought these on Amazon, but maybe Office Depot, but they have them on Amazon. And then, like I said, I didn't want to lick on the envelope. So I just used the washi tape. I made 10 of these up with the instructions to my hostess, give all 10 out, hand them to them if they're local, address them. And I would even ask if you would really drop them in the mail, I'll put a stamp on them. You know, I think, it, I don't know if one stamp would do, it's really flat. I think it would, but two stamps would definitely do. 
Um, and then I just made this on avery.com. It just said, just for you, so many goodies to see and smell inside. It's just a cute little, and I just found that little thing. So that was really simple. I just wanted to look kind of fun. So I made 10 of those. And then I basically used one of the Scentsy envelopes I got in the store to do a hostess packet. Um, in the hostess packet, it has a lot of the same things, but I do have this that was shared on the team page. It's like the little info hostess packet. I really need to laminate them so they're nicer. I just stapled it. So some people will read, some people won't read. I put a pen so she has that. I put some extra samples for her. Uh, the whole flyer of the, the month, a full catalog with all my QR codes that I've done and the little smelly stickers. So kind of like a deluxe thing. I gave her her own uh, like it, love it sheet. And then I went ahead and stuck in like 10 highlighted invoices. So that's for her. And I just put it in something that kind of keeps it together. Figured that would be nice. Um, and then I put in what I'm calling like two deluxe handouts. And these have full catalogs, everything you have, some of the sam wax samples, some candy, uh, and some body samples I put in there. So they don't have like everything in the whole world, but they have more. And so I'm going to, I tell the hostess, your number one job right now is to hand these out right away. Hand them out to 10 people that you think would want to buy Scentsy, but you've got two extra ones and they're bonus and they go to the two people you know will buy or the two people that you think might want to do their own party or the two people who might even want to join Scentsy and do it themselves. But you've got two deluxe, you've got your hostess packet and 10. So 12 people, I, I want you to get handed out and let's see if we can collect orders from those people. So I also stuck in a, uh, just a, a room spray because it fit in here really nicely so they could try it and have one to see. Um, other than that, I really don't put much else in. I put like, uh, sometimes I'll put a bar. I did put like a, a used bar that they can just try, um, things like that. The main thing with that is that I say, there's really no rules about my bag, except you can't leave it in the heat. That's the only thing, don't let anyone let it melt. But I think being real specific with it and say, also, once you've handed those 12 things out or however many you make, be sure that you ask who wants to smell and either have them come over and visit or have them uh, take a little turn to drop it off. Can you say hey? What are you Can you hear? Doing? Can you say hi? Hi. Hi, Colby. Can you hear? Hey, Colby. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm great. <laughs> she had a really rough couple of days. You want to tell them? I threw up. Like oh. three times. Three in the night and like five in the day. Oh, that's awful. I'm, are you feeling better, though? Yes, I am. Good. So much. We're very thankful. She threw up the night before in the night. And, of course, we come home from a late football game. We were exhausted. I didn't even know what had happened. Ben was, like, dad of the year, and he took care of it because it was all over her bed. And she had to have a bath in the middle of the night. You know, we hardly had any sleep and because we always went up for a teenager. It was just exhausting. Anyway, and then all day yesterday, she was sick. We were here for the first little bit, but then we had marching contests. And we were there all day to like, we didn't get home to almost midnight last night. And she was mm -hmm. feeling better finally, but. I only threw up one time when she was gone. Oh, bless your heart. Well, I'm glad you're feeling better. Right. Yes. Okay. All right. We're coming by. Bye. Bye, Colby. Bye, sweetie. She always likes to say hi. Well, <laughs> oh, you've had a so, rough weekend. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And like I said, those marching contests are not for the weak of heart. They are so exhausting. When I got home last night, between, I think because I'm excited for my son and stressed out because we want to do well. And then you're cheering and you're sitting in stadium seating, like between my shoulder blades. I had such an ache and I got in the bed. I took ibuprofen and I put like the massaging heat on me and I was like, you're dead. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's exhausting. <laughs> These guys, sorry. <laughs> well, that's good. It's all good. Anyway, okay. So, how about your on the go bag, Michelle? Do you have any tips or anything that you do kind of differently or is about the same? Um, I'll show you. I just did some, you know, I got the clear bags to do, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, yeah, like the borrow yeah. bag. Yeah. So, you know, I put, tried to put a little bit of everything, of course, catalogs and order forms. So do you give, how many do you, do you have like a set thing you normally give or you just kind of? I usually kinda... give about 10, but I really like your envelope idea. I think that might be a better way to, you know, just have, say, just hand them the whole thing, not just. Right. You know, 
Because a lot of times they come back with the samples and I'm like, no, I, I want you to give those away. I know, they do. <laughs> I, me too. That's what I keep finding. I'm like, wait, wait, this wasn't supposed to happen. <laughs> but I put a counter clean and Scentsy Fresh and I even put like the Freshen Up Pup Spray, a Room Spray. So just so some stuff that they can try. Yeah, I love that. I love that idea. And if uh, someone watching has never seen that, like those clear bags are great because it's just visual you can see it but you can put it in anything you already have you don't have to feel like you have to buy stuff the clear bags are not very much on amazon so i mine came like in a two-pack and you probably find something else but yeah put like a buddy and put things they can experience like a lotion and oh definitely counter clean it like a sensor yeah. fresh and some samples and and tell people like this is one of the things i put almost every time I... she's frozen still still oh, not now not now okay okay, okay. okay. i think i was i didn't know i froze i still looked good um oh my internet my internet's unstable am i okay yeah, yeah. okay all right um but basically just i like to put a wall fan diffuser in because they're like virtually indestructible and they're something different people haven't seen and most of my people when they try them they really like them so mm -hmm. i've been selling way more pods recently than i, I i've seen a really pick up steam Okay, so on the go parties, like I, I would say the main tip with that is you can't just say, okay, well, I've given it to him, it's gonna be successful. You still, with every type of party you do, you have to host as coach. And you have to say, okay, on the first three days, I want you to have all this passed out. On the next two days, I want you to have let three people smell it or whatever, you pick what you want, but some kind of guide, uh, like a template. And then you check in, not annoying, just so they know that's what I expect. And then, hey, did you do it? Oh, great. Uh, you know, and another thing is I almost always try to talk them into doing something in person as well. So if I've given them an on-the-go bag, say, well, let's just try a 30-minute Facebook party or a 30-minute Zoom thing. Or um, can we meet at Starbucks or can we meet at the park? Um, let's just see. Because then you have like a, it's like a catch-all. If you do really well and succeed with giving um, your on-the-go bag, you get some orders, that's great. You can even say, we're trying to get $200 at least before our actual event. Um, but then you might catch a few people. And when people get together, you always do better. As if you can get them there, you always do better. Yes. Um, okay. So on-the-go parties are awesome. And I use them in conjunction most of the time with other stuff. Uh, I will have one at my open house tomorrow and I'll be trying to get it to go home with somebody. Um, a lot of times you can just talk about like our incentive right now. Look what I just got. got I, know, I want one so bad. I like did. I need another blanket and cup. <laughs> See, I do. I don't, I really do need it. I've justified it because my dog gets on every blanket and makes them smell bad. And then I get a new blanket and I say, she's not going to get on this one. Nobody let her get on this one. And then I wind up going, Ugh. She's on this one. Like she curls up. She's obsessed with blankets. She um, burrows. Does and then she? she just, yeah. yeah, she's a burrower. And so, but I'm like, no. And then, uh, but I just got this. I just opened it. And the mug is good too. And yeah, I don't know where it went. Oh, here it is. So with a $500 party, they get a mug and a blanket in addition to their stuff. So going live we're going to go live here in a little bit Colby and I and talk about it and I'm hoping I get a few more people but it's so cute and, you know it's just fun it's a fun perk I felt excited when I got it so um be sure you utilize that it's purple inside Sarita but anybody who does that this month gets it okay I forgot to say one thing I'm just going to go back y'all don't forget the bonus points for the trip right now if you promote or you get a person certified on your team instead of the thousand it's 1500 I think and yes. if somebody who had already been on your team promotes, instead of 250, it's 500. It's like double. Um, and so you want to take advantage of October. We still have three full weeks, three weeks today, three weeks. Anything can happen in three weeks if we get going like now. Um, man, I just get so sidetracked. But, you know, I talked about this little guy. He's so cute and he smells amazing. Um, we just got booed yesterday, which is, you know, where the kids oh, come yeah. drop something off, right? And so I'm going to go live with Colby and have her talk about how fun this would be to get, like, booing. Because people are, like, I just, we got booed. And so I'm glad I have these because that's what we're going to do, even though I'll probably tell the people who we are. They'll probably know it's a sensitive person, but that's okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I think that, that like, most people will be like, oh, now I got to go to Walmart. But if you can fill a need, like, hey, you don't have to go anywhere. I got you covered, you know, things like that. Okay. Um, what other kind of parties? 
uh, of course, a home party. A home party is awesome. A lot of people are intimidated by getting a home party or maybe they feel like they're bugging people. Reasons people don't want to do home parties as a hostess, they think, I don't have the time. I don't want to clean. I don't want to have to like uh, have food and drink. I don't want to have a failure and disappoint, and waste your time. There's a lot of real, real reasons for not wanting to do an in-person party. And I get that. But that's why I think it's our job as consultants to say, listen, we're going to do our best. I'm going to make it as easy as possible. You need to do it at my house, let's do it at my house. Just get your people here. If uh, we don't want to do it at a house, an in-person party can still be done at a restaurant. We could go for a happy hour. We could, you know, uh, whatever. We could do a spa. We could do a theme night, a spa night. Everybody just come and visit. We'll sniff and I'll have buckets to soak your feet. I've seen people who've gone to the dollar store and gotten just little buckets and they fill it with warm water and they do scentsy soak while everybody smells and passes around the testers. Um, you know, there's things like that you can do. So it doesn't have to be at someone's house. You can solve that problem of having to clean. Another thing is you can say, well, let's get two people, y'all co-host. And then you bring the sweet thing and you bring the salty. Or if you know someone really stresses them out about food, just say, I'll bring a little snack and you don't worry about it, you know, because it doesn't, they're not coming for the food. That was another thing for years I did wrong. I brought, I would be very elaborate with the food offerings and then no one would even eat it. Or they would be standing around eating and just smelling and buying. I'm like, yeah, that's not good right either. Yeah. So really, I always say one sweet, one salty, one drink. And that's all you really need. It doesn't have to be elaborate. They're not coming for the food. Um, so you could do multi-hostess and then they could just split rewards if they you know, want to do that. Um, telling them, listen, we're going to, we're going to really try to get people there, but people can also buy with the on the go bag. They don't have to be in person. We can have an online link. So you're going to tell them you're going to supplement it. So it's not all on that, on that together party, but then you're also going to say, but it's so much fun when we get people there if possible. So let's call them, let's invite them this way. And then three days later, let's do this. Let's check in one more time and just really good hostess coaching will help that situation. Um, but they're fun. And then if once you get one, I just say, be part of the party. Don't be the party. Like, you know, be with them, have them advocate and them advertise and them test, give testimony on the products they like. That is my number one tip. Um, how do you know your hostess? You know, most of you are pretty experienced at that. If you're someone watching a replay and you, you're new or you've never done anything and you're scared to death, I suggest, I love name tags because it makes, makes it easier to remember, first of all, because I'm the worst. I'll be like, hi, I'm maybe, oh, you're Michelle, okay. And then I'm like, I don't even know her name and I just said it, like, I don't even know. And that's embarrassing and it doesn't feel a very good connection. Yeah. So name tag, then you just look like her up. Everyone's more approachable with a name tag. Um, and then like we did at the picnic with the shapes, the square, the stroke. I love to do that. I say, put your name and your, your shape because it also helps me to know a little bit about them. Um, I'd use the hostess a lot. I'll be like, oh, how do you know Kelly? Oh, well, we, our kids do that too. And then you have a connection and you're not just the sensey person there to sell. That's a really big tip. Um, doing a booking game like the dice game is really big when you have people in person. Uh, there's a lot of videos on the dice game, but it's basically a way to entice people to book a party of their own because once you get a party, you want that party to be super successful and you want someone to join, but you really, really, really need to not just be like, yeah, I had a party. You need to say, I need more parties. So tell the hostess ahead of time, listen, if somebody books a party on your party, you can get an extra half price item at their party. So help me find who that would be. That's something I don't do all the time. And it's like, why not? That is just, it's built in to be a, such a good thing. Um, so Anyway, those are some of my tips. What other kind of parties are there? I mean, fundraisers, not really a party party, but it's still yeah. same same concept. Um, well, of course, there's Facebook and Zoom. Yes. Hi, which I, feel, yes. I, I know you like the Zoom because you can see everybody. And I do think that's more engaging than sometimes with the Facebook parties, just because yeah. you feel like you're, you know, unless you can go live with your hostess, which you could do that too. Yes. That was, I think that's helpful. Um Sometimes just posting throughout the party, it's hard to get people engaged. So I do always tell my hostess, you know, make sure you're liking and commenting on the post, especially if it's something that you really like or tag somebody, you know, that maybe likes this color or maybe likes the Disney stuff or, you know, tag people that you think might be interested. Um, yes. 
So I, I will say Facebook last year is very successful with parties. Um, yeah. <laughs> this year it's been a little slower. Um, but yeah, I think it's just finding the right fit for your hostess. I agree. And, and really communicating with them to say, listen, I get so excited when someone hosts a party because I know you're going to share Cincy and I want you to earn a bunch of it for free at half price. So I'm excited about it, but it doesn't magically happen. Like it has to have, we, we're going to work as a team. I'm going to help you. And I just going to ask some simple things of you. You do those things. We're going to be more likely to succeed and get to what we need. However, at the end of the day, if we've tried and it just is a dud, because there's duds. I like to tell them sometimes we have a dud. Sometimes we have a dud and you know what? We try another month later and it's awesome. It's mm -hmm. sometimes it's timing. Sometimes we have to look at where in the month, you know, you're at the end of the month. People don't have the money. Some people need to wait for that next paycheck um, and things like that. So I just like to give them a little bit of an out without trying to like poo poo it away. Like, you know, I don't want you to do well. It's not that at all. Mm -hmm. But I know that I know from experience, like one of my really good friends was like, I don't know. I was like, why doesn't she want to help? She want to help me. And then I realized she was, she said, I just don't want to disappoint you. I don't want to like try it and nobody come. And I was like, oh, I never thought of that. Like that's, that is, yeah. that is something some people worry about. Um, and so that's why I kind of just make sure they know sometimes they're great and sometimes they're not. Sometimes they're mediocre. We're going to go for great. We're going to do everything we do to get to great. Um, and we'll just see from there. So yeah, parties are important. Um, we didn't talk about how to get them. We have shared a lot of resources and stuff. She's blocking out that room now. Look at her go. <laughs> um, the best way to get a party is really to just ask. A lot of us think of all these elaborate things to do. Or we try these fancy posts, but it's just to say, Sarita, we host a party. I mean, <laughs> that's hard to say no to. Mm -hmm. Will you help me? grow my business and host a party for me. I'll make it real easy. Some people will still say no, but see, I still don't ask that very much because it feels self-serving, blah, blah, blah. But honestly, sometimes you just need to do that. Now you can do the other angle, which is absolutely accurate and appropriate. You want so many things. Let's host this. Let's just do a, you know, like we've talked about, do you use the party word? Do you use event? Or you just say, let's collect orders. Whatever feels right, whatever you think that person will respond to the most is what you should use. But at the end of the day, you just got to ask and you got to say like, oh my goodness, my last host has got all this for this much. Or look at how much you can get for free from just collecting orders. All your friends are already buying Scentsy here and there. Why not collect them? Like it doesn't have to be a big deal, but you have to ask. So do your own personal booking blitz and just say, I know you've got that list of 100. Some of us have a list of 200. Some of us have a list of 35. It doesn't matter. Start with those and say, I'm going to go ask every single person right now. Can we do an on-the-go party? Can we do something online? Can we do it, you know, whatever, whatever, in person and just see what they say. Some people will say, oh, I'm just too full right now. I can't do it. And I say, okay, no worries. Um, maybe we try again in a month or two. And a lot of times they'll say, okay, then you got to write it down and actually ask again in a month or two, because they're going to have a harder time telling you no a second or third time. And a lot of times I'm just like, oh, they would have come to me if they really want to do it. I don't want to be obnoxious. There's two ways to be there. You can be obnoxious with it, but you can also just be um, a good business person and follow through. And sometimes they really meant they would do it later. And they're glad you asked, you know, or you can say, oh my goodness, I know you love purple or I know you love mugs. We've got this great thing right now. You're going to get all the free and half price Cincy, but you're going to get this amazing blanket too, or mug or whatever. So don't be afraid to, to use those things and talk to people for their interests because it should be about them. But the ones that are the closest to you are already awesome customers would probably also do it if you say, I've got, I really need some help this month with some parties. Can, can we talk about a way to do a party that would uh, get you lots of free and half price? So I think that's mainly what I wanted to do today. Just talk about that. Um, moving forward, and I will say this, if anyone watching this or anyone on the call uh, gets a party and then panics, we're here. Your mentor is here. Your sponsor is here to talk through ways to do it, some steps to help you succeed. Uh, one thing I didn't talk about, but something that's on my list, I want to make a video series of hosting coaches and I, I host this coaching. So basically I'm like, hey, I'm so glad we're doing this party and it's just recorded. So I can send that on day one to my hostess. And it's just a short little clip saying, I'm excited. Here's what I'm going to send you. And here's what you do with it, right? And then like two or three days later, like, okay, great. You should have all this out by now. If not, be sure you do it tonight or tomorrow. Kind of a, just a thing. So that 
every time someone does it, I don't have to do that on my own because time is uh, hard to come by. And if you have, you could have six parties going on and all you have to do is go send that video instead of do it six times. So that's something too, if you're not comfortable with videos, um, get comfortable because it does, it saves time. Uh, you could do it with an email template, but people are probably more engaged with video. People just will watch videos, especially if they're short. Um, I know there's all kinds of tools that I haven't gotten into uh, that you can just have like stuff already ready to go like broadcast, project broadcast. And even I think with uh, Visly, you could probably do some of that too. And I haven't, I don't know if I'll ever get to the point where I have time to look into it and get it done. I feel like I, will, I never will, but maybe. Um, anyway, other than that, I think that's really what I want to talk about um, moving forward. I think what we're gonna to try to do with our Sunday calls is have like a first of the month thing as each week have a different focus. Um, one of them for sure will be a work time. So we would join just like this, but it'll be like it's sample day. So everybody will be sitting and making samples and we'll just visit while we do it and talk about, oh, I'm making this sample this month or I'm doing this or look how I did this. Just a working time, that would be fun. That way we still connect and I get to see your faces, but we get to be efficient. Um, we could maybe, I think samples is just kind of a good one each month because most of us are doing a monthly sample at least, if not more. So I guess that would probably be like a mid-month or maybe third week, Michelle, you think? Yeah, third? yeah. Third or fourth. It'd either be third or fourth. I don't yeah. know. Just depending kind of, kind of when everybody gets theirs. I usually get mine about, about a week before the first or so. It just depends. Sometimes yeah, it might should just be the last week, but then it likes, uh, we, yeah, that is the one thing I need to check when mine's been coming and see what third feels right. But then if we don't have them in time, that'd be annoying. So yes, yes. Cause then, because then if we do it fourth, some of us will have gotten it and want to get them done in May, but fourth might be right. I, I don't know. We'll look at that. Yeah. Um, I'd like to have that be one of them for sure. And then, like I said, any ideas y'all want to throw out there, like, can we do this on one of our weeks or, you know, whatever, let me know. Um, we do, if we get a big bunch of attendance to, to some of these, we want to break into some breakout rooms, have each person like brainstorm, so each group brainstorm and then come back together and share. Cause I think that would be fun too. Um, but I'm trying to look for a little structure and all that just so that we know, first of all, it, it is hard to think of a topic every single week, yeah. but I also don't want to not, I think it has been good to have it every week except for holidays or illness um, because there's always somebody here and it, and it's good. Like I feel way more connected, um, especially yeah. with like you and Leslie and Melanie, people that are not in town. Um, and then always, there's always time. Like if anyone has something that they need help with, this is a good time every week. Um, you know, it's challenging during the weeks because people are working and people have so many family things, but we've kind of dedicated this time. So I hope more people who are just watching the replay will join us when they can, because it's, good to hear uh, what you're doing that's working well, what you need a little help with and to brainstorm together. So anything else you guys have on your mind or want to talk about in our last minute or two? I don't think so, Sarita, how about you? Um, no, I just need to talk to you, Megan, on a side note, but other than that, no. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Okay, well then I'm going to end uh, the recording. Let me stop the recording. If I can just do that, let's see. Stop recording. Yeah, stop.